Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigerian Student Arm present her annual national conference 2020 with the theme Descent as sheep among wolves, as light in the darkness in a soon ending world. Join us for an amazing and refreshing time in God's presence. God bless you. Femi is a member of Professional Photographers of Africa of America, sorry, PPA. He's also an alumnus of the Dell York Creative Academy, where he received training in cinematography. He has participated in multiple exhibitions and has been nominated for several awards. Femi has taught photography over the last 10 years and is currently mentoring a young generation of photographers to make images that cause social change. He recently volunteered to document the COVID-19 response as a photographer at the mainland infection to the hospital in Lagos while working as a doctor. Dr. Femi is a director of special projects for arts and medicine, a non-profit firm that uses various artistic media to promote health within hospital spaces. He's a born again Christian and has served several in TMB Nigeria students and in his church. Dr. Femi is married to his husband and they are blessed with an amazing son. So please can we welcome Dr. Femi Adjaye. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm happy to be home with my CMDA brethren. Um, uh, thank you for the privilege of having me here. First thing, uh, can everybody hear me clearly? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Fantastic. So today I'll be talking yeah, about... Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so today I'll be talking about gifts and talents as the Christian... Medics Extra Oil, and um, I will be sharing my own personal experience, and um, I hope that, I'm sure that everybody will be able to glean one or two things from my story. Uh, I will start a bit theoretical, then I will go practical, then we will also have our question and answer. So, and also in between, I'll be throwing a few examples of people I know so that we can relate to the story and the theme I'm talking about. So first of all, what is a gift? Because we are talking about gifts and talents. And uh, we need to first be able to know that the word gifts that a lot of people mystify, they make it seem as if some people are talented and other people are not. Uh, a gift, if you just go and Google, what's the definition of a gift? There are about three to five definitions and they all have something very important to say about what uh, what a gift is. The first one says the gift is a natural ability or talent. For instance, if they say somebody has a gift for comedy. The second is that the gift as a man now is the act of giving something as a present. Meaning, for example, his mother's gift to him was a pen. The third is a gift is a thing willingly given to someone without payment or a present. I'll move on to talent. What is talent? Talent is a natural aptitude or skill. For instance, you can say someone is talented, is a talented surgeon. A student is talented in anatomy. A student is a talented in teaching, so he's a tutorial coordinator. So but what I want to first start with, my first point is everybody actually has a gift. Because if you look at these definitions, the word gift is from giving. And the fact that you have something to give, whatever you have to give, is your gift. That's the beginning of the journey. So a lot of people ask and say, how do I identify my gift? How do I identify my talent? Uh, some people are gifted, some people are not. Dr. Femi, you are gifted, I'm not. And that's a lie. Because everybody has been given something that they can give out to others. For me, my own story started into photography. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a photographer. So my story started in 2004 when I just sat down and I asked myself that how I'll be in medical school for six years. And I was initially planning to travel out to do my medicine or to study outside the country and I knew I was willing that, okay, I didn't have money to 
fund a big scholarship abroad. So I said, okay, if I get a scholarship or if I get admitted into a university outside Nigeria, I would work and I would find something to do to earn a living while studying in med school. So it, when I got admitted to University of Illoria, I told myself, I may as well do that since I'm here in med school for the next six years. Why don't I find something I can do? And anything you like on for six good years, you have a level of mastery of it. Or, or it. As if there's nothing you can say that you consistently do for six years and you will not be able to get some tangible results. So I asked myself, okay, what could I do? Should I learn photography? Should I uh, learn to play the guitar? Should I uh, start a writing career? So I had a number of things that I fancied at doing, but I was not... I would say as at then, I wasn't good at them. I was a beginner. So I eventually settled for photography. So the first thing, I just want to emphasize that everybody's journey starts at the bottom of a ladder. If you, have, if you start out at a gift, it is something you can give to people. It is also something that you know that you will have to develop over time. So your gift, everybody has a gift. So I, a few other gifts that I... A, a lot of people say I have now that I will still say that is a product of the journey is I teach photography, I teach and a lot of people say Femi, you are an excellent photography teacher but really that gift comes from me giving along the way. I used to teach maths when I was in secondary school, I used to teach my other colleagues how to solve maths problems. Uh, I was the tutorial coordinator in my for the NCC MDS, now CMDA, during my 100 level, 200 level. And I actually developed the attitude, the aptitude of teaching over the years. So people may come and say, oh, you are talented at, you are gifted at teaching. But I'm saying it started from more than 10 years ago where I was teaching my colleagues. I was giving my time to them. I was helping them out so that they would make good grades. The same thing as the NCCMDS uh, tutorial coordinator for my class, I also taught and I organized people. So your gift is anything that you can give. Now, I'll give you a few examples of things that anyone can give. And if you keep giving it over a period of time, like for, my, for me, it was not over a period of years, you will now be seen as talented in it. So you can give your time, like everybody, especially students. Uh, someone told me uh, a saying I can never forget in my second year. That was my first med, my first uh, preclinical year. I told him I don't have time to read. I cannot finish the syllabus and read and read as much as I need to pass the exam. And the senior looked at me and laughed, and he said, "Femi, let me tell you something." you have the most time you will ever have in your life right now. He said, by the time you are just having how many courses, by the time you are in year two of medical, of preclinicals, you have to remember what you, what you studied in uh, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. You have to read them up to pass your preclinical exams. By the time you are in clinicals, you have more to read. You have your clinical courses. You have so much more. By the time you become a doctor, you have to read. You also have to see your patients and you also have your family to take care of. So for you as a student, I can say for most people, you have more time now than you have, than you will have in another 10, 5, 10 years. So for those of us who are students, what you have is the gift of time. You have time that you can use to develop yourself. You can have, you have time that you can use to share with people. Some people may think that even the time they have, some people are good listeners. And you may think that that is not a gift. But they, some people will just sit down and listen to other people and throw in advice. And whether you know it or not, that is a gift that over time can be bankable. Over time can make you, can open you up in ways you can never imagine. Some people have a gift of mediation. You may think it's not a gift, but the fact that you can listen to two people fighting, bring them together, and be able to solve their problem, that is a gift. And there are 
arbitrators whose job is to their their job is to so everybody has something they can give, and the developers you can give that ends up being the talent and the gifts. Together, so if you don't know what your talent is, do not worry. All of us, but I didn't know I had a talent until I developed and found myself doing. I was faithful as a tutorial coordinator. I picked my camera as a hobby and I started taking pictures and I was taking pictures of nature, of taking pictures of people and trying to generate stories. And my pictures by my third, between my third and fourth year, I was actually nominated to be the reality TV show for photography. And I was the second runner up in photography. And it was the first time I realized that, okay, I think I'm actually good at this. Because I was in the I was just doing my thing. But when I started, when I entered the competition and I saw people who had been photographers for more than five, ten years, but far more expensive there than I did, I knew that, oh, so my my two, my, my three years of investment in photography, of reading books, I'm sharpening my skill, actually put me to the national line like this. So let no man despise your gift. Know that you have to start somewhere, and over time, you can now be, become talented at whatever it is you find yourself giving out. Now, I would want to open, uh, let's read a few scriptures. Uh, uh, I was Ephesians 4 7. It says, But to each one of us, grace has been given. As Christ apportioned this. This is why it says, When he ascended on I, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of his fullness of Christ. Now, what I want to take out of this is Christ gave a diversity of gifts. He gave some uh, are pastors, some are teachers, some are evangelists, some are in the ministry of service. And the truth is, some appear to be more prominent than others, but every single one is the that Christ has given. And you find that some people even transition from one gift to another, or one gift end up, ends up being a leverage to another. So let no man despise your gift. I will share a bit of personal experience. When I started photography in 2004, the average photographer was the kind of people that will come to parties and take your pictures and beg you or try to make you buy pictures for 20 naira back then. So anytime I saw my camera in high school, I saw my colleagues to the photo, they would just jeer and say, how can you, a medical student who is perceived to be someone of a high standard, Bring yourself low to become a photographer who is seen as a low class person. And they used to laugh and jeer at me. Even back there when I went, when I was dating, when I started going to look to see my, my friend, my, they used to call and say, How is photo? How is photo? And back then, it seemed as if I was someone who was, um, who some people were embarrassed that how could you bring yourself to a low class and be working as a photographer? Thankfully, over the years, the industry of photography has blossomed and a lot of people now appreciate photography. Photographers are not earning well. But I'm telling you that as that when I started my gift or uh, what people celebrate me for, it was something that a lot of people looked down on. And it didn't seem important. So even if your talent is clean, and you just 
is easy to hit dirt. In, in, where in your class, in church, are you are able to work on and say, oh, let's clean this place up. That is a talent. That over time, you can work. You probably can find mistakes easily. You have a friend. Uh, it's the same member to Dr. Valerie Opawe. He always sees mistakes. So he's, he's helped a good number of people who free their books. He has helped a lot of people who free their, their thesis. It's the fact that you think that uh, it's something that you, you do not pay attention to, it may be a gift that if, if that gift is polished and well taken care of, well, it can actually be for the whole world to know you. So let no man despise your gift. However small you think it is, however big it is, whatever, whatever you think it is, if you pay attention to it and you develop it, it can become something that would make you celebrated by all nations. We usually say, I ah, came to come to my horizon, nations that I do not know come and serve me. All these things um, happen only when you harness your gift. And your gift also doesn't necessarily have to be something outside medicine. I know some people who are talented surgeons. If I have any medical challenge today, I'll pick up my phone. I have like three for three people. I, I will always call if I have any difficult medical case because they have made themselves, they have shown that they have the gifts. Even when we were students, the way they read, the way they approach patients, I can I, I can vouch for them. And I, if anything they say, I will take it to the bank because they have shown that they have developed that they have passion for medicine. And for studying and being diligent about the over the years. So your gifts is anything you can give, and that gift can become a talent if you harness it, if you shine it, if you work on it. Thank you very much. So I'll be moving on to say that um, I also want to give another scripture so that uh, we just have this home. If you go to uh, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 8, the King James Version, it says that I planted, that's poor, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So it is neither, so then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered, but God gave it the increase. Now he that planted and he that watered are one, and every man shall receive of his own reward according to his own labor. So I'm trying to tell that every single person is important. And if you master whatever gift you have, whatever talent is in your hands, it will drive you to a place of stardom. Uh, someone, has, or, or some, one of my, someone said something that has stopped me for more than 15 years. He said, what's the job of the person who cuts the president's head? He said, Papa. But most likely he has to see the president once or twice a month, probably once a week, which is more than some ministers get to see the president. He has access to places where most people do not. But he's a baba. So as, as simple as you think it may be, being having to cut someone's head, it can be delivered to take you to another level entirely. So whatever your hands find doing, do it as unto God. Uh, uh, I will move on to say uh, I was preparing, I, I was reading about something called the Matthew effect. And it's a concept that is now, is from the Bible, but those in science and those in other industries have even blown it up. Uh, the concept is, I'll just read, is, I'll read what it says. The concept is named after and according to two of the parables in the Synoptic Gospels by Jesus. The concept concludes both the synoptic versions of the parable of the talents. And it says, I read from Matthew 25, 29, the real, in our, in our for everyone who has will more be given. 
you will have in abundance. But from him who has not, even that which he has will be taken away. Matthew chapter 25 to 29 is the same thing. It says, I tell you, to everyone who has, will more be given. But from him who has not, even that which he has will be taken away. So the catch for me is, he who has not, even that which he has. If somebody has not, why do you say even that which he has? And the truth is, it implies that everybody has something. Just like the widow that said, I have nothing. I have nothing but a little bit of oil. That oil was what saved her. So whatever you have, whatever talent you have, you have to harness it. You have to be diligent at it so that you can shine. Because if you have a talent or you have a gifting that is just starting and you despise it, even that talent will be taken away from you. If you can sing, and you decide to work on your singing, and you live for three years, you will find out that you, your, your singing will actually deteriorate in the next three years. So anything you feel you have, anything you know you like doing, anything that people identify as you have a natural aptitude, do not think that you have to be perfect at it. My photography for the first two years was not good, in my opinion. It was the learning process. So you have to focus and be diligent at what you are doing. Even in the Bible, when Joseph started dreaming, people laughed at him. His brothers laughed at him. His dad didn't really believe in him. But that didn't make him despise the dreams. And it was those dreams that gained him, made him the prime minister. He shunned the dream because everybody didn't like it. Then he would have shortchanged his own destiny. So never despise what God has given you. Never despise what you can give. Even if it is just being able to listen to people. By listening to people, you may end up being a counselor. And that may end up being something that will put you into a totally different level. Okay, so I will move on. Uh, so, how do you make your talent work for you? How do you grow your talent so that that extra oil will be visible to all? Because the Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The fact that you are talented at what you do will attract men to you. Everybody likes Excellence. Everybody wants to associate with someone who's a superstar. So even if people say, the people that's calling me back in the days and used to call me for to, a good number of them call me and say, Femi, I want to get married. Can you be my photographer? I want to learn photography. I want to photograph my children's birthday. So the same people who seemed to be discouraging you back in the day, if you understand why you're talking, it will be the same people that will come over and bring you favors. The same thing in medicine, if you're reading too much, people will tell you, some people may say you have no social life. Some people will say, why are you just going to night class so often? Why are you going to, to, to work in your holidays in the hospital? But if you work at, at whatever talent you have, it will, it's, it's, it's just like the, the Bible says that seed time and harvest time, it shall not cease. So as you sow, you will reap. So it's, it's a natural law, whether you're a Christian or you are not a Christian. If you sow, you shall reap. So the more you sow, the more you shall what you're doing, the better you will become. The second you have to be is you have to add value to those around you. So whatever talent you have and you have identified that I am, I like this thing, I believe I have potential in this thing, you don't kid yourself. The Bible says the greatest, when, all, when people, uh, the, when the disciples were asking that who will be the leader, who will be the leader, uh, Jesus said that the greatest is the servant of all. He also told them that they have to be 
the things the children are very they are very open. So if you want to develop your talent, you have to work at it a bunch. The second, you have to be willing to serve. You have to be a servant. Being a servant is not something very popular. But even in the business world, if you look at who are the most successful businessmen in the world, you think they will get it. You say Jesus, you see in Nigeria, and these people are actually serving billions of people. They are providing their things to a lot of people. They are providing their talent, their skills, and they are serving. So, if you whatever gift you have, if you want it to start to grow, you have to find platforms where you can share, where you can give. Like I said, I was I, I taught for free. I taught my master's for free for years. I taught I was tutorial coordinator. I taught a good number of photography. And today, hello, all sir. We can barely hear you now. Saying that you should not let anybody look down on your talents. Whatever talent you have, it's a benefit to the world. And as long as you have add value to yourself, and you also are willing to serve, you, a, a lot of people come your way, and that will be a massive network for you to move forward in life. I photographed, recently I photographed at the COVID isolation center, and I was able to get into that place because of a friend that I had worked with in medical school. He was a physiologist, a physiologist student, and I, I brought him into the photography industry when he started out. So the fact that you are serving and you're teaching other people will be an avenue for you to also grow in life. So work on your talent to be willing to serve in as many places as possible. Now, you have to also, as you grow your talent to become independent. Hello. Okay, so what I would do is I would I will move outside. I think the network may be better outside. So give me almost give me a few more minutes. If the audio is not good, I will have to move outside. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, sir. We can sir, hear you. Yes, it's quite better now. Uh, loud and clear, sir. It is drizzling outside, but don't worry. I I, I need to get this uh, discussion to uh, uh -oh. I was uh, uh, saying that you have to first be willing to work on your talent. Whatever talent you have is just like a like a gold ball. And whether you like it or not, gold ball is dressy. You have to be refined and polished. So by you constantly working on your talent, you will get better whatever you do. Now, in, after you identify your talents are working, you have to now be ready to serve. Because if you are the best baker, for instance, and nobody has tasted your cake before, if you're the best surgeon, but you do not have a place where you can work, it's, it's still utterly a waste of time. So you have to find as many avenues as possible so that you will be able to express your talents. Because it's by expressing your talent that people will know you and they will start to work with you. So whatever talent you have, find places where you can serve. Now, most, the easiest place, the quickest way to get to harness your talent and to network is one of free. So for instance, I photographed as for safety students for more than five years free of charge. I never even thought that I, I should make money from it. Because, and because of that, I got so many former classes of medicine that should go and cover their weddings. I got so many people who knew my work and could vouch for me and ask me to come to places where I would never have, been, have, have come. So, serve, 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 serve in the house of God, serve your place of work. You are organizing people and organizing things. You can serve to be in the LOC of maybe the Christmas uh, party that they are doing at your place of work. Whatever, whatever you can volunteer, whatever opportunity you have to volunteer to do something with what you can do is what will propel you. When Joseph, for instance, interpreted the dreams to the butler 
until the one uh, the one that's having the king wine. He never he probably never knew they would they, they could be people that would help him. So as much as possible, help people. And there are so many ways that that has worked out for me. Self, self, self. Now the next thing is as you start to work on your so now I will make a comment on that. It's not that do I work free of charge? Yes and no. There are some places I I, I say that my gift is something I can give up to people. I look for people and I give out my gifts to them. I give out my talents to them. If anybody comes and says, Dr. Femi, come and give me a free photo shoot, my first answer is no. It's not for you to come and ask. It is for me to go and look for places where I can give. So don't think that, don't go and give your gift to people who do not value it. Don't cast your, your, your trust before it's fine because they will trample on it. So help people. Uh, right now, there was a time that my business, for instance, wasn't moving as fast as I, I wanted it to. So I said, okay, I love photographing people. I love photographing videos. So I started looking for entrepreneurs who were doing marvelous things. And I went, I went to photograph them for free. And I enjoyed the, the experience. They put up their own pictures. And I expect clients from that. So anytime I find out that I am in a place where I cannot, I, I need to move higher, I give gifts. For instance, I, another thing I, that I was for, I was the head of photography department for my church. I, a position I, had for, I held for three years. And I never posted my church pictures online. I never tried to use that position to blog it. But there were not a good number of people that saw me serving in the house of God. And from there, they came and they said, come and do this job for us. So whatever gift you have, work on it first. Find places where you can sow seeds. The more seeds you sow, the more you will reap. Whatever you have, look for places where people that value that your gift are and sow it there. Okay, so the next thing I would also say is there's a law of process. Process meaning that whether you like it or not, you, a, a woman has to be pregnant for nine months before she can deliver. Whether she's a Christian or she's a Muslim, whether she's married the mother of Jesus, or she's just somebody that nobody knows. Every pregnancy has to last nine months before can become a baby. So once you start storing your seeds, you need to know that it will take quite a while before those seeds grow up and you can get fruit. Sometimes some seeds are like mango trees and it may take years, it may take up to a year before you can root from it. Some seeds are like cucumber that if you sow it within two months, you can reap. So, so big seeds that will last years. So small seeds that will last a few days, but keep sowing. The more seeds you sow, the more you reap. Invest in your stuff. Like I said, the Bible says, seed time and harvest time shall not this is a principle. And the more you sow, the better you are. So you need to serve. Then the next thing is you need to network. Network may sound very business like. But wherever you are, some of us are Christians that we go to church and you go to church, you don't even say hello. The only time you say hello to someone is when they say, say hi to the person right beside you. And that's it. So you come to church and you go back home and nobody knows what you do. Nobody knows. You have not even shared what God has given you. Because like the Bible says, let your light shine before men so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So you, you should not hide your diabetes. That's from Matthew 5, 16. So you have to find ways. You have to network. You have to find people. Let people know what you do. Let your light shine. And as more people see your light shining, the law of multiplication starts to come into practice. If you have so many seeds, if you have harnessed your talents, 
you will now start to multiply. Now, the last thing I want to say is that there's the part where time and data comes to them home. As you work with God and as you develop yourself, God will open your eyes to things that no eyes have seen and no ears have heard. Like, for instance, right now there's 19. And for instance, I decided to volunteer and work at the isolation center and to document what was happening. My, my wife was initially she said, no, what did you do with this? Uh, I told a few members of my family, they said, no, I said, see, I, I want to give. Because whether I like it or not, if COVID-19 is what the world says it will be, it will either come and meet me at home or I could be at the front line where I could give us, give my services as a photographer and give my services as a doctor. And that in itself, the fact of giving myself a solution center opened so many doors. For instance, I've been on TV three times talking about myself. I've met a commissioner in Lagos State. I've met an OBA. I have served and I've just, I would like to just put me to a level. And, and I never even thought of that when I was giving my time. There are patients who ask me and say, Dr. Ford, are you for real? Are you a photographer? Because they never saw me with the camera and say, You are an amazing doctor. There are also clients, photographic clients, who say that I'm a, I'm a medical doctor. And they're like, Wow, oh, Dr. Femi, you are a, a photographer, you're also a medical doctor, and you volunteer. That makes you a hero. So, all that seems that I. I a good number of people look back and say, ah, you can't this thing so that it will push you to the limelight. But in all honesty, I just gave my time and gave my resources. And God allowed me to do that. So, see, time is always here. And the thing about time is see, time is always painful. Because the same corn that you will plant is the same corn that you can eat. The same corn that somebody plants is another, the same corn that another person will use. To so if you choose to plant your corn, you look stupid because it's a risk. If there's, there's nothing that says that corn that there won't be farming, there's nothing that says that that corn will not waste, but you do it in faith. So whatever you, your hand finds doing, listen to God as trust it. And just be sensitive in this. I don't know how to put this, but but there's a way we pray regularly at the church. God give me eyes that see and ears that hear, because the same thing that you that will do that will push you to the next level you're going is what many people will not want to know. If everybody was doing it, it would not give any phenomenal results. So God give me eyes that see. And ears that are here. Please, can I, let me just move a little bit more. Um, okay. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so uh, so I'll be rounding up by saying that it is a process. Whatever you're doing, do it that comes to God. But you, nobody knows tomorrow. And there's no certainty that whatever you're doing, that you become uh, a dangote. Because many of the, a, a good number of the uh, music that uh, the things we hear out there is uh, uh, everyone wants to be done with it. But if done with it, the SI unit for so it means that 99.999% of people in the world are failures. Let that sink in. If done with it, the is the mark of success. It means that every other person, 99.99% of people in the world are failures. So whatever gifts you have, to harness it, we start to spread and continue to be contented with it. Godliness with contentment brings great gain. So serve people with what you have. Work hard at it. Invest in people. And don't be in a hurry to see results. Yes, results will come. But even if results take their time to come, let's say your own, your own food takes 10 years to germinate. Don't worry. Just keep, don't, 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 don't let the process cause things that makes you miserable. Because you feel that uh, your, your, your mates are 
for instance, something that I regularly say is I will mention a few names. Bayo Moborio is my very good friend. He's a personal photographer to get to the president of Nigeria. Umalo Lanero is my very good friend. He's a personal photographer to uh, His Excellency Governor Sawulu. I have so many other friends that their own cities are and minded. And I thank God for them. I support them. I greet them. I add value to them. So if it takes a lot of time to, or it takes time, and you feel that uh, most people are taking time to germinate, it's a process. And you don't, you don't know where you're going. Just make sure you don't get miserable on, uh, and compare yourself to others. You can learn from them, but don't let and other people's successes make you miserable. Be happy, invest in them, pray for them, add value to them, and your own will come. It means your own success is around the corner. So at, at this point, I think I would uh, want to summarize all I have said today. Uh, your gift is some anything you can give, and everybody has something to offer. Everybody has something to offer. Also, your gift is like a raw material. It takes time and it takes effort. You have to polish your gift before it can shine. Also, you have to know that your gift is not a isolation. If you are the best at something, but nobody knows and nobody has had that experience, you are just like diamond at the bottom of the sea. Nobody knows and it's of no use to anybody. So you have to serve. And in the process of serving, you get better and you also get known. So your network starts to grow. Also, I said it's a process. It's a lot of multiplication. You have to continue sowing it in as many places as possible as God gives you wisdom. There's also the part where God will open your eyes and you have to keep praying that God will the eyes that see so that you know where to invest your talent so that you do not cast your pearls before swine. And lastly, you also have to be happy for others. Your immediate time, your level of success may not be as high as other people and it is not a competition. Enjoy the process. Whatever it is, if you love baking, you can bake. If all you end up baking for is for your children and your grandchildren, that is success. Let no man make you feel that you are not successful at what you do. It is not a competition. Thank you. God bless. Now, any questions now? Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you, sir. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Can anyone hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We really, really, really Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate. Thank you, sir. We have questions. No question is still. Okay. We have a question here. If you have questions, send it to the chat box. Only one person sends his question. Please let's remember to mute our audio. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank so you the very much. first question is what do you do? What do you do if you have more than one gift or talent? How do you know which one to focus on and the other to put at the back side? Was the question heard? 
that is a very fantastic question because a lot of people are multi-talented and I suffer from that too. So uh, like I said, if, even right from the start, I was asking myself, do I learn music and play the guitar? Because I have a good ear for music. Um, I can't play any instrument, but if I hear music, I usually can know what is good and not. And some of the people I heard for the first time and I'm like, this is magic, end up winning awards internationally. But I, I, I'm still an enjoyer of music. I'm not a musician in any way. So the same thing, for instance, right now I'm a medical doctor, I'm a photographer. And I just left Lagos like two months ago. And I'm here and I'm like, okay, am I supposed to be a photographer or a medical doctor? And the truth is, I really don't know the answer to that. I pray that God would uh, give me the insight to know whether it's medicine or photography, or even if I will get a job that um, leverage of both of them. So if you have talent and you have multiple talents, the first thing is try to sit down and think, which one do you think God wants you to, to start with? Or which one do you think that um, is your best bet? And Mind you, sometimes to the fact that you have multiple talents doesn't mean those talents should be to commercial use. You cannot, I usually say, you cannot climb two ladders. So it's very difficult to say somebody who wants to be a guitarist, wants to be a photographer, wants to be a baker, and the person will be excellent in the three of them. So you have, most times I advise people, Focus on one, grow it, and let the other ones be hobbies when the time comes. Um, I usually give you an example of someone I love so much, T.I. Bolo. Many first, as I when I was in Union, we didn't know T.I. Bolo was a he was the one that sang that is green and the one that sang let's be together. So, but that uh, music yeah, made her so many people. And by the time she, she was a photographer, we all trusted her and loved her. The same thing, mind you, for those who don't know much about her, T.Y. Bello actually was a hairstylist when she was in the university. She loved making people's hair. And she spent most of the same people who travel from Ibadan. UI to Unilag to come and make your hair with TY. And that shows in her photography today because she, people find it so comfortable to relate with her. And that's the process. I'm sure back in the day, she never knew she would be a master photographer. So, whatever your hands find to do, start with it. And God will direct your journey. So, for for T.Y., who I love so much, like I keep saying, one of my mentors, she moved from an accounting student to a hairstylist, to a musician, to a photographer. And she's each one today, but mostly right now, she's more of a photographer. So if you have multiple talents, start with one. Enjoy the process. And just enjoy the process. And many times, if the other talents will be brought into pass, they will naturally fall in. Don't climb two ladders at the same time. Thank you. All right, sure. Thank you very, very much. So we have other questions. Um, the next question says, how do you manage gifts with time? Okay. Uh, time is... Everybody has the same amount of time, whether you like it or not. All of us have to. Uh, so if you want to sharpen your talent, you have to dedicate time. To it. So for me, as a photographer, for the time I was going to weddings, I would, rather than go to my friend's wedding, I would send a gift. But you don't necessarily need me to be at your wedding to know that I love you. So for you to handle your gift and your talent, you have to go and to create time. You have to have the power 
of saying no. Like something I also didn't say that helped me because time is because I knew when to say no. To the glory of God, I never had a receipt in medical school. And part, that was partly due to the fact that I knew when to say no to medicine and when to say no to photography. So after, after the reality TV show, I came to the between my 300 and 400 level. When I got to 400 level, part time, I didn't touch my camera for a full year. All through pathology, I all jobs. I, I just didn't touch my camera for a full year. I said no to photography because then it was the time to focus on medicine. So knowing how to say no, even sometimes to your passion and knowing the right time will help you generate time. The same thing, knowing how to say no to, there are some things that you do that feel good, but really they are not necessary. I'm not saying don't go for weddings, I'm not saying don't go for parties. If you, if you are building, you have to spend a lot of time working what you are building rather than having fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question says, how do you handle rejection in the course of pursuing your talent, say, as a writer? Well, if I will be honest with you, Rejection is good, but what can help you even better is try as much as possible to be open-minded and ask them why you were rejected. I look at some of the pictures I took when I started photography today, and I look at them and I laugh because to the best of my knowledge then, with the photos I had seen, it marvelous, beautiful. But I look back at some of the pictures I took and I'm laughing that, can you imagine that? You are rejected. First, number one, don't despise your gift that you believe you are a good writer. There's nothing wrong with you. But the process is what you have to ask them. Why you reject it? They are coming what you better. What is your talent? For instance, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, Kele Chemajo is one of the biggest photographers in Nigeria. And uh, when I came to Lagos for my housemanship in 2020, I printed like 15 of my photos on his office and showed them, showed him the people. I said, oh, I like these pictures. But you need to work on your composition. Get books on composition. And within two weeks, I got like four books on composition and photography. And I've read them. Some of them I've read them up to three different times. So if anybody rejects you, it is feedback. Now it's not left for you to use that feedback in the right direction. If it's the feedback says that your writing is good, but you are having grammatical errors. Your writing is good, but you have not developed your story. Your writing is good, but your character representation or your character, your, what just get the feedback and work on the feedback. And sometimes too, if the, the feedback may be, I don't think you are really meant for this. And if someone is telling you that, you can pray about it and ask that, you know that I'm not talented at this. Because sometimes we end up, like I said, if you go up the wrong ladder, you are finding yourself, in, you go and find, try to go up the right ladders at the same time, it is also wrong. So first things first, take the feedback. Look at the feedback as you, and then you know what to do. Whether you and then you will know what to do. That is all. Right. Till date, I still have some people who look at my pictures and say, "Oh, Femi, this particular picture is not good." Even funny enough, if I have, want to have an exhibition today, I will submit my pictures to a few people who I trust, and they will look at those pictures and tell me which ones to remove. So it is feedback. So feedback. That is always valuable. Uh, the last thing I will say is if somebody says your writing is not good, also ask yourself who is this person? Who is this person? Uh, I'll give you an example of a picture. There's a picture I took during my award. 
and it was nominated in Portrait Category of Nigeria Photography Awards. I posted the same picture on a WhatsApp group, and one gentleman said, this picture is, has too much highlights. I don't like it. And for me, I was just smiling that, well, you are just a beginner in photography. So I, his own feedback, I threw it into the trash because the veterans, those who were judges for photography competition, who have been photographers for more than two decades, said this picture is awesome. He said that he didn't like the picture because there was too much white there. So for him, so there's some criticisms or some feedback you get that you throw it into the refuse bin because the person probably does not understand your work. So I, I say it, it's, it's, it's a dicey one, but you just have to find, get the feedback and if it's something you can change or change, if it's something that is not for you, throw it in the trash. Thank you. Well, right, so thank, thank you very, very much. much. The, next, the next question says, what is your talent and non-mainstream talent? There's no bad talent. Like I said, a barber can the actually... Is, what is your talent and not mainstream talent? Like, what yes. do you suggest you know how to listen to people? How do you yeah. hold such a skill? There's no bad talent. Like I said, if you are good at cutting the hair and you are working for His Excellency, you... <laughs> the, 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 the president of a country you are made for life. Uh, the, if those of, those of us Christians do know Pastor Kojo Yemade, uh, that's my pastor. A few months, if like a month ago, he posted a picture of his barber. Uh, and he said, this guy has been cutting my hair for the last 20 years. He's very good. And the feedback you got from that guy within 48 hours was that he became overbooked. He was receiving calls to the middle of the night. Uh, people were calling him. And he has branches of saloons all over Lagos. So as simple as you think, uh, what, who's a barber? This guy has stores all around Lagos. And because he has been diligent cutting a pastor's hair for 20 years, that made his business blow. So whatever talent you have, and Photography was not seen as a talent back in the day. Who knows whether listening to people and telling them, uh, and just listening to them and giving them advice will become a thing. Because right now, the world is talking so much about mental health. But the fact that you can sense mental challenges with people and you help your friends, you never can tell that gift may end up being something that in another five, 10 years, the world will celebrate. So there's no bad talent. There's no good talent. Like I said, don't let anybody despise your gift. It may appear very small and be like a mustard seed. But when that talent grows or when that talent puts you to a place where you can, you can shine, it, 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 it can be anything. Like I, The last example I will give was telling me of a guy who loves Rolex watches and he knows so much about Rolex watches. And he was at a job interview and the person was like, ah, is that a Rolex? That person said yes. And most of the interview was talking about Rolex. And the guy got the job. So if your hobby is knowing about wristwatches, that is not a mainstream hobby. It's not even, so most people will say that's not a gift. That's not a talent. But knowing about wristwatches is one of, one of the things that made this guy get a job. Knowing about wristwatches may be what will help you start your own wristwatch business. So there's no gift that is too small. So just like I said, not every gift will make you a billionaire. And we, all of us cannot be billionaires. So being a billionaire is what you see as being a successful at your gift. Then you are already marked for failure. See why below or uh, even I myself, by all of us that people say we are talented today, back there in the days, it was it was not seen as a mainstream thing. So work whatever your hands finds to it, it does unto God. Next question, please. 
Thank you very much, sir. Um, another question is that um, how do you handle um, discouragement oh, from people you while you are pointing about it? Okay, please. Let only one person ask the questions. Uh, the admin, so we do not have too many people. Discouragement is normal. All of us get discouraged at the same time. I still get discouraged from time to time. It is part of the process. Don't get miserable at it. And like I said, it is feedback. Sometimes you also need to know what works for you. I, I, for me, I love music. Before this, uh, before this, this lecture, for instance, my wife was laughing because I was playing Kobam song. Uh, we plenty that not be only you kids Jesus. We plenty for there. So for me, I've learned that uh, how like if things are not working for me, we plenty. I beg, we plenty. I tell things not they work for. So it is a process. It is a process. So and find if you find out that you are not feeling happy, you are blue. Find things you can do that are productive that will make you happy. It may be music. You may be going out. You may be baking, you may be painting. Just find something you can do. And it doesn't have to be something that is serious. Like for me, anytime I'm really stressed, I listen to music. Anytime I'm really stressed, I paint. Like I'm a photographer, so I have studio backgrounds. So anytime I paint studio backgrounds, I feel better. Like I can think better. So find, you may, you may even be riding a bicycle. You may be having a garden. You may be having a fish pond. Or an aquarium. Anything you do, it's normal for everybody to feel bad. Like I said, as Kobam said, we plenty, plenty way. We will be like saying, no, they work. Okay, so don't hang in there. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Another question that I came in was that how do you manage um, pursuing medicine at, at the same time? Um, how do you manage practicing medicine and at the same time pursuing your gift in photography? I've, I've answered that, but I will repeat. Knowing how to say no. Knowing when to say no. So there's a time during my 400 level, I didn't touch my camera. During my 500 level for some postings, I didn't touch my camera. So for some others, I said I took it. During my housemanship for my first posting, I wanted to settle down and know how things work. So I didn't take pictures. I didn't take clients. I told all my clients no for the first three months of my housemanship till I settled down before I started doing some things. Uh, during my NYSE, I was taking nature pictures and I, I had more time in my hands. Uh, I actually stopped clinical practice between 2014 and 20, end of 2019. I said no to medicine for a while because I wanted to build my photographic business. So that's, so at that point in time, I said no to medicine and I faced photography. So I'm just trying to say as much as possible, there are times where you combine things. There are times where you say no, there are things you say no to. You don't have to take every photography job. You don't have to, uh, you just know what need to say, know what to say no to. Like for me, one other thing is, I am not a consultant. I never even wrote primaries. I never even thought of writing primaries because for me, medicine is one of the things that I want to do. And it's not what I feel like is all for me. So for me, I said no to residency. So, and for another person saying yes to residency is the best way to express their talent. So, if you need more time, if you want to grow, you need to know what your priorities are and know how to say no. Thank you. Wow. Well, okay. um, so finally, one last, the last question is, um, how do you overcome the fear that arises from time to time in the course of utilizing your gifts and talents? I think this, um, from the stand and viewpoint of just starting, uh, I think, I will still say it again, we plenty. <laughs> Don't mind me. I will say we plenty. Everybody has fear of, of uh, failure. It's normal. You just have to get used to it. You, you cannot overcome it. I would, yes, what can happen is that um, once you look at your track record, it can make you feel a little comfortable. But the truth is, in life, life is a series of reaping and sowing. 
So at the level where I bought my first camera for 100K, I was afraid. And I bought the camera, anything. I took good pictures. Eventually, it was stolen. Then I borrowed camera. Then I had to go to another level, and I had to think again. Ha! Huh, why should the last camera I bought cost 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 a lot of money? Let's just put it that way. And the same feelings I had of fear on the hundred K camera, I still had it on the new camera because now we are coming. At, uh, so the same thing for your work. If, if if um, I'm showing you, you my work now, I may not feel afraid. But if WordPress photo calls me and say I should come and defend my work in front of the UN, then it's normal for me to feel uncomfortable. So get used to it. It's normal for you at whatever you are doing. It's a process. And don't let anybody make you feel like you are a failure. You are working at it. Read, take whatever criticisms they give you as feedback. If you don't like my, there are people who don't like my work. And I'm happy and I'm comfortable with it. Not everybody likes my work. There are some, even for instance, if you will go into business and you will do your talent commercially, there are some people that, I'm sorry to say, they are not my client and I am not apologetic about it. I have who my target client is and I serve them and they can afford the prices I'm charging them and we are happy. So, Criticism, rejection is part of it. Being anxious is part of it. Everybody is anxious. Even Dangote is owing money. So I'm sure he's is, is, is investing money in his business and he would also hope and pray that things will work out, that COVID-19 will not affect his business too badly. So like I said, I will repeat again, it, you need to, for you to develop your talent and to grow, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and being a bit nervous about what you're doing. It is normal. Right, wow. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that. I think um, by now, a lot of us medical students and folks that are thinking of uh, how they pick up our talent, how the delays that we've been having before now, I think we've had our doubts get to a certain extent. Now I, think, now I can pick up... Uh, my 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 saxophone skills now and polish it better now. Thank you very much for that session. We are really grateful, sir. Uh, all right. Um, uh, one thing that struck me from what you said was the connection you made. The next talking that you were able to get through your talent. It reminded me of the Bible that said, um, "The gift of a man made way for that man." So I realized that um, our gift can actually take us to um, take us. Beyond because we are that we can uh, place that we can't even imagine, and we are really grateful for exposing that to us. Uh, um, I'm just giving a brief announcement to everybody present in this meeting, and I thank you guys, I thank you all for your patience and for the listening years that we gave, and I hope you guys were able to benefit maximally from the exposition and the session. Uh, we'll, we'll be starting our um, third day, the third day, that's Saturday by um, 10 a.m. tomorrow. And the party session for tomorrow will be uh, starting by 10, 10 50. So I would employ everyone, of course, to set our schedules to be ready. All the dishes that you want to do and everything, just set it. Give one day for Saturday, you can try and catch it because tomorrow's session is going to be very powerful. Uh, please, um, we'll be praying for um, our speaker now and I would like us to bow our heads in prayer as we start. Um, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for our, for our speaker, Dr. Femi Adewi, and we are grateful for sending him to us today. And this time, we know that um, you are intentional about our growth, and we glorify the name that is exalted in the name of Jesus. Commit our speaker unto you that um, the gift that you have given unto him, that it shall take him unto greater heights in the name of Jesus. That his mm-hmm. pictures shall go even to the, uh, far and beyond to places that even his legs cannot carry him in the name of Jesus. That where he is not, his pictures and his talent to speak for him in the name of Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. Father, we pray that everyone that is here that is still thinking and delaying about that talent that you have placed in his heart that is necessary to catapult him to the place of destiny. 
that that person that is here that is still having delays, we pray that that mind will be made up in the name of Jesus. And from from constant polishing that person, and we'll be able to um, attain greater heights in our various um, fields in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Posted my Instagram handle. It's my name at Femi Adewi. That's my Instagram handle, so you can connect with me too. Have a great. I believe you are blessed. Thank you for listening. For more information, you can log into www.cmdnigeria.org.